In this tutorial, I'll show you a way of uh, modeling a ring uh, using SOLIDWORKS and I'll also show you a quick way of doing uh, more photo view rendering and then we'll go into MODO for more advanced rendering and do it there. Uh, photo view is a small version of MODO, a light version of MODO. First and foremost, for jewelry, SOLIDWORKS would not be my first pick because Rhino is much more powerful or MODO. But I've met quite a few actually uh, jewelry makers that use SOLIDWORKS. I was surprised. And then I started thinking about it. And uh, yeah, for a, a few tasks, it could be actually uh, quite useful. So here we're going to do a sweep. Sweep is basically uh, an extrusion along curve. And we're going to use two profiles. One that I drew here. And I'm going to sweep this along. And we're going to end up with a solid. So let's start this from scratch. Using 2020, but any version will do. So this is SOLIDWORKS. Control N to start a new part. Make sure you know, uh, usually uh, jewelry is in millimeter. But, and in the right view, sketch. And now we can, uh, so I'll go circle. Click, drag. And if we want to put dimension, smart dimension, click here. For uh, size 9 mil, we'll go 18, 17 mil. If you want a radius, you right click, display somewhere here, and the radius is here. It's a diameter, but it's a bug. If you click on it, it's radius. Okay, I'm going to exit my sketch. So now we have the diameter. And in one of the perpendicular plane, I'll choose the front. I'll draw uh, my profile. So it could be a circle, it could be anything. I'm going to do something interesting here. I'm going to do... So this is the line tool. You can press L. We could also make this symmetrical. Here I want an arc, so I can use an arc. Uh, if I really want to have fun, I can use style spline with a fun tool to work with. Right click. So I'm just doing concept here. So I'm just eyeballing everything. Uh, might be a bit big, but if we want to smooth this um, fillet, if you don't see it, it's because it's usually too big, too large. So go maybe two mil. Voila. And here we could do a chamfer. Uh, same thing, it'll be too much, so we're going to go 1.5. Voila, perfect. Sweep. Um, the sketch is this one, it's the cross section. The path is this one. Now, here is the trick. On the option, we can do a twist. So we can say specify twist value, so 360, and you say OK. And now it's a pure solid. So if you want to do a quick rendering here, the fastest way is to set that up to perspective. Make sure photo view is installed. If not, you go add-ins here. And you make sure photo view is on. I think you can do it here too. And just check this. And uh, so we have the perspective, that's a way of faking a camera. Now we need some lighting, so you go under photo view here, scene, basic scene, and we could start with one of those or even this one. So double click, and now find a, a spot that you enjoy, like this. And to start seeing the render, you go on the render tools, preview window, this one sometimes takes a while. So this is MODO. This is the light version. My floor is off. To adjust this, you go Edit Scene, and you can say Offset to Geometry. So now the floor jumped here. And we can see the shadow. This is just an environment. You could change your environment here. If you want reflection, it's here. I'm not a big fan on reflection. I would just keep shadows. Now, if you go advanced, this is very useful. You can change the HDR. 
you see don't worry about the background just worry about the highlight uh, where those uh, light box are shining you see because we can always change the background so I'll leave it like this for now maybe 12 yeah say ok the overall render go under option this is the size of your image better is the quality of the preview maximum will be for the final if you want this to glow you could use bloom uh, and you could use also contour this one meaning that it will trace ink around it that's just a choice I usually end up going to modo anyway the material everything is under appearances so if I went on the metal um, I could go gold and pick maybe this one drag and drop it and if I come here actually we want it here I can set to the whole body so now the whole thing will get that material if we wanted let's say a painted black stripe coming here you could drag and drop this to the face you could say I want this to be only on the face and now you see there will be a coat of paint going around and you can do this on both sides like this now to get the final render find a, you can use control middle click to pan find the neat spot this will be just a, a highlight don't worry and go now final render so now your ring is rendered and you can see those black lines you see that's the ink I kind of like it here it gives so much uh, texture um, the bloom it's the glowing uh, we don't see it because it's not strong enough so this one works backward goes 60 and you see now it really glow uh, I think it's a hair too much here. let's go 75 yep on and off and that's how far five is quite a bit I would go maybe three yeah and then you can go save and save your image and if you save it as a PNG you would get this on a layer now if you had an animation here uh, if you were using motion study and you had some sort of animation let's say go here uh, next 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 I'm just gonna do a simple animation like this I uh, very rarely do animation in SolidWorks but uh, it can be done you one thing amazing here is that you can save this to uh, if you go photo view 360 you could render the whole animation here with model but you can save it as a model file and even if you're using a complex assembly motor springs everything gets into a point cache and a carryover so that's really neat because for years I had to re-rig everything in model okay so now let's say you're done with this in the past I used to just save as a SolidWorks or as a STL but I would make it polygon mesh it and open this in Modo because Modo can open uh, SolidWorks there's even a plugin that does it very well uh, if you come here they have the assembly in the part um, now with this version you can just come here and say save photo view and save the model that's it you don't have to do any of the old thing uh, you can just go here I'll put it on my D drive and we'll call this uh, let's say 02 and now it's done and I'll save this as a part and I'll save this also as a STL what you usually use for 3d printing STL here will be my last choice it still work and you can go option and you can tell how I would go fine to get quite a few test stations. but that will really be my last option because everything I could always uh, re of this if you're coming from Rhino uh, you could just make sure you mesh it like this delete the solid and select this as a Rhino now you have to save it as a Rhino 5 
because Modo haven't updated yet there to version 6, which is fine, but don't save it as 6. If you bring the Rhino, you just open the Rhino here. Uh, I don't know which one is this. I think this is something else, but just to show you. Um, oh, this is one of my students. So if you open in Modo, you'll have to uh, select this, go Shift there, and uh, now you're in Modo. This was, uh, what did she use? A Rhino. This is a Rhino file. Um, and there's some a few tweaks to do at importing here. Let's redo this slowly. To close a Modo scene, Control W. I don't want to save this. So now we're in Modo. So once again, if it's a Rhino file, you just file open. That's it. This one, and you say open. As long as it's version 5, it works. It says 6, but it's version 5. So now let's see how to open a SolidWorks. So the ring is here. Now I'm using 2020. I don't think Modo can open this, but let's try it. Yeah, it cannot. But if it was 2019 or something else, it would open fine. Uh, so instead, I'm just going to open the Alexo. Uh, where is it? Uh, I think it's this one. It's asking me if I brought the image from uh, Modo, from SolidWorks. Don't worry about this. Just go no. Voila. And it does put it into a mesh, but that's fine. So first thing here, it does bring a lot of things. Let me close this. Control W. Uh, to orbit in Modo, it's Alt, like this, or you use this. To zoom is the scroll, and to pan, it's Alt Shift, or using this. So pan, orbit, and zoom or scroll. Yeah. Now we're seeing a, seeing a lot of things. It's because uh, SolidWorks brought a lot of things. It brought two light, but we don't need. I can just go delete, delete. It brought my floor, we could keep it. We can unparent it. And it brought the ring. And to optimize it, it made it a static, meaning that I cannot select the polygon. So to change this, you right click, change type to mesh. This is something you want to do because if you want to texture it or do other things. Now I usually come here to see what it brought. And actually, it's pretty neat. It even brought the ink, uh, the ink that I did went through. If we went F8 for preview, you'll get this. Uh, usually, the material carryover, if you bring it as a SolidWorks file. Here, it did not. Delete. I like to keep things clean. Uh, let's get rid of all of this. Perfect. What are those things that we see? They are texture locator. You can the gear, and you can just say visibility, don't show me the locator and the texture locator. So it looks a bit nicer. If mine is blue, it's because I'm in reflection uh, here. You don't have to have this. Now, this is good enough to render. I can, uh, so I could go item, create light, um, area light. Here. and then we could uh, move this up but as you can tell my light is huge and the reason of this is because we have a tiny ring the ring actually came to scale but for rendering it might be a little bit too tough so I would go polygon R or click here for scaling and I will make it much bigger like this Q to drop the tool, W to move, and now we could actually even scale it bigger than that, but now our light is too size, to scale. So I can go E, and this is like a big softbox, so would create a nice shadow. And I like to color my light, so a little bit of yellowish in the light, and uh, often this is a bit too much, I'll go 2.5, this is the intensity of the light. And now we can start to look at it, F8. Uh, so I went a little bit too high. If I want to apply here um, material, I can just select this or drag and drop using F6 to, uh, to my object. 
look you can just go like this and it still remember this that's very cool that's going to be very useful um, I think we are using so I'm in the asset and I think I was using the painted and it was one of those one part of code some this one I think voila but it was darker so you can always come here and tweak it so you see this is how dark and bring it way down when it's black it's usually really black and I don't think this one should be this reflective so that's also oh here it is because it's an old shadow go zero voila or a little bit this tab doesn't exist with the new one if you went uh, prince, uh, physically base it's here the other one we use the gold so voila. if I wanted the gold to be um, a little bit blurred I could come here maybe tune it down it's very reflective here 80 80 and this is our rough so maybe I'll go 20 so it's a bit blurred look nicer now I'm not sure what kind of environment we're using here so I could go um, here environment and it looks like it brought the one from SolidWorks so go delete delete only keep this turn all of this on uh, one will be too much so I'll go right away 0.8 um, and here we could reuse the same one by the way nothing wrong with this uh, we could rotate it here on Y if we want to change the highlight you see or we can use a different one by going F6 and Modo has way more choice uh, when I do jewelry I often use uh, the black floor something like this or like this but uh, uh, there's a lot to say with this so I'm just going to keep it simple uh, and it went here so we'll delete this one voila and we'll tune it down a bit maybe even less point seven. if you wanted the ink again um, Modo did bring in in but I got rid of it so add s custom sellage and you see it does that little nice little contour line uh, this is how the width and this is the quality so I would set that to 10 uh, now what I could do to remove some of the noise um, this is the size of your image I could go settings oh it looks like my oh it grabbed the setting from SolidWorks so uh, yeah even 16 is nice because usually it's 8 because I have thin line uh, this is very good to remove noise 0.2 is fine I would go even maybe 0.1 uh, the default of this usually is 8.8 8, but 4.9 would pretty much do the same this is to remove noise here in the reflection maybe I would go 5.12 uh, refraction I would do the same subsurface we're not using it right now and uh, that's for the shadow on the floor that's pretty good and let's come here 64 yeah the rest is good one last thing I want to show you if you wanted to do let's say um, a depth of field you could go shift D move this uh, shift this to create an instance uh, you could rotate it so it doesn't look the same maybe scale it a bit do shift D again move it. so we have a bit of depth it takes a while to render it's because of those uh, high settings I have uh, make sure it touch the floor otherwise it's gonna really look weird like I said it's because of my settings the item sorry this one uh, you could say depth of fill so make sure here it's looking at the right one you could go out of focus and now to set the focal point control F so you put your cursor and now it's going to focus here and this will get um, out of the way if you don't see it it might be because your f stop and this is from SOLIDWORKS that's why it's way too big so usually I would use 4 uh, and that should blur the back I can start to see the blur of it 
if you want a lot you can go to an f-stop uh, 2 8 or like you go down it depends on your uh, scene scale too so the best is to do test the last thing we can do it's um, go under shading and on the final color output uh, we can put a tiny bit of tone mapping uh, 15 to uh, tune down a bit the saturation we can do a vignette effect to darken the edges this is very useful with jewelry especially jewelry 250 you see so it's a bit darker so your eyes focus where you want them and the bloom is for this the glow here still think it's a bit too bright here uh, we can also reduce maybe the area light yeah, it's pretty strong so come here and bring that to maybe 1.8 and now we can do a final render so here's the resulting render uh, I've got way too much uh, depth of field and as you know the ink doesn't follow makes sense but actually it's not too bad um, the bloom is here so here we don't have much uh, the bloom goes backwards so if you go 70 you would get no glow and you see now it pops up here so I think we could go radius it's how far it reach to 3 and maybe go back to 85 or something like this so it's really subtle but it's there yeah this I like uh, I think we can even go less than that and that's the vignette we darken this and the tone mapping and now to save it's the same as photo view go save and you can save your I'll save it as a JPEG here okay um, for the SolidWorks user that's it but if you want to see a bit more model um, we could do even way more things here I'm just going to go here to isolate so I only see and I'm going to go shift A to frame it um, if I wanted to scale to do more modeling uh, there's a tool called um, topology uh, retopology automatic so if you click here Modo will uh, shrink wrap a new uh, polygon it looks weird but it's actually not that bad if you go shift tab and you deselect and you render uh, it's actually doing a pretty good job now they are better than this there's a plugin called quad remesher that I use quite often it's just mind blowing it's here kids this one they have it for Modo, but Maya 3ds Max, and make sure the hard edge is off. And look, you just go. So this is your final count. You go remesh it, and it's pretty amazing what it does. Look, it's perfect. Um, and now, if you lost the stripe, um, it looks like they're still there. But if you did lose them, uh, polygon. 2 L shift click L and shift up arrow to grow voila so it's actually not hard to reselect what's missing and now that it's like this you can go shift tab to make it uh, a P sub a subdivision surfaces and now we could do a lot of funky thing we could go uh, F3 and we could sculpt so uh, I could even go into the paint module if I want and shift A here and just to show you uh, I'm gonna hide this and I'm gonna put my trackball to no voila and we could hide the one on the back but uh, yeah I could just go push and I can use one of those with the cellular make sure multi resolution is on right click and drag and now we can start sculpting 
So I'll do it here so you can see. And now you see it's sculpting all of those. And I usually use a Wacom when I do this, a pen, because it's pressure sensitive. Uh, here I'm just using my laptop. Uh, shift will smooth. And I want it to 3D print Q to drop. Uh, you need to go geometry, back geometry cache. And that will actually back that sculpting into polygon. So now you see the sculpt is uh, embedded in the polygon. And now you just save this as an STL and you can send this to uh, Shapeways. Or